So if you take the first question, why we are upset one day and the happy on the other day, when the event is same, when the person is same, why it happens? Does it happen because of the person in front of me or does it happen something is there inside my head? <clears throat> People say, today is a bad morning. Morning is neither bad or good. Look at it. Morning is neither bad and good. It is something within me makes the morning bad and good. Now I will take up your uh, statement you just told me. It is very, It was very hectic and I could not do the practice. Did you not return to your home? Yes. Did you not sleep? Yes. Did you not go to restroom? Yes. Did you not eat your food? Yes. Why didn't you add the practice? So there is something happening in the mind. That is why. That is why. Ultimately, these practices should become a knowledge practice. Knowledge practice means that you are here and now, in that particular moment. You are aware of what is going on inside the head. Maybe a work, maybe a task to do. But behind that, there is always a peace. There is always peace. That is what we are going to understand. So find out the moment your mind falls into that trap. Trap of what? We, the mind has repeated millions of times on the same event with the same person. We are, my mind is clear one day, my mind is upset on the other day. Just, just see anything and everything. No, 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 I don't, no, I, I, I will not eat this food today which you already cherished and liked. So the first question is, I have to, we have to go and find this answer. Why I get upset? Upset includes anxiety, hesitation, reaction, everything, stress. Oh, there is too much of stress in the office on a given day, one day. The other day office, you know, I enjoy working in the office. So that very office, the space and the work has nothing to do with me for my peace and happiness. Once this is very clear inside my mind, the knowledge, the wisdom that has a clarity. What is that clarity? Clarity means that you are separating what is outside from what is inside. I may have 10 sessions today. For example, I n normally don't do it. <laughs> so mind start claiming that it is, would be an exhausting day. I have to speak for 10 hours. And then the problem comes. So it brings the outer event and a person inside because of ignorance, because of habit. Someday you are totally absorbed in working in the office and you forget that you have already worked for more than five hours and you are totally focused and you enjoyed that work. No exhaustion, no fatigue. Look at that state of the consciousness, the state of the mind. That state of the mind is guided by our true nature. 
and that is why we succeed. Even we work for five hours, even if we work for six hours. Day before yesterday, I was sitting and then I started working on another book. And I said, oh, it's a 10 a.m., starting from five. So the mind does not go outside because of the habit and it doesn't pick up the old automated response and then it never gets exhausted. I used to give an example in India that, okay, no, 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 I get tired. I said, do you, did you get tired when you celebrated the marriage of your brother? No. I said, how many hours you work? You know, I work for about a week. See that. And now going to the office, working even for eight hours exhausts you? Where is the problem? So we are looking for understanding. How I am upset one day with the people, place, possession, and happy the other day? I have answer. Huh? Why my mind worries in time, then escapes to something else for pleasure? This is what you told me. It takes little time to understand, and once you clearly not only understand and you experience, the third question is why my mind worries in time? Time. What is that time? Hectic activity. Payroll. And now it is done. So it is the worry in time. It is not that the worry manifested because of the payroll. Otherwise, if the payroll causes you the worry, then leave the payroll. <laughs> that we don't leave. So it is my projection. So it means there is something happening in the mind that projects the worries on a particular work, on a particular day, and it drops. One aspect. Second, you know, the mind has acquired a habit, a crazy habit. First mind says, this work will exhaust me, or it is exhausting me. And then it leaves that work and escapes into doing something else. Then again, it does the second thing, it escapes, start doing the third thing. I am upset, escaping, let me have a cup of tea. No, no, because I am exhausted, so if I take a cup of tea, take it. But the mind should be clear. If the mind is clear, clear means what? Clarity. What is the clarity? That the knowledge in the mind has separated who am I from the rest of the world? So while talking to Louis or Eric or David, the knowledge in the mind has a clarity. It separates you from your role. You are always free. Where is the problem? Where is the problem? On beautiful women, you know, I got recently. I have nothing to do. And when I have nothing to do, I feel bored. I said, who bores you? Do you bore yourself? <laughs> so the boredom comes from your mind. And what is exactly that boredom? So she always remains excited. You know, I want to live an excited life. You know, it should be hustle and bustle. I said, that is where the mind is attached. So now you don't have those activities. So mind is asking for it. And you don't get it. So you are boring yourself. You are making yourself crazy. And that is the right moment to discover inner peace and happiness. 
So she doesn't have any problem. So she started the journey. She said, no, I want to learn more about that, you know, what is happening to my mind and how I can discover inner peace and happiness. Why and how the mind lives in fear, doubt, pleasure, pain, and alternating pain and the pleasure. This is very important. So, yeah, we'll take uh, as many questions and then we'll do the practice. Now see, the how and why. We both are sitting together. I know you. You are physically looking at me. I'm looking physically at you. I look at this house. So this means I know knowledge. Knowledge is coming through the sense organs. Uh, you look at those beautiful creatures. So you see that? This is the physical knowledge we get from the sense organs. First level. First layer of knowledge. First means of knowledge. What is the second means of knowledge? Thoughts, feeling. There is no problem. When I say you are Nancy, I am Girish, let us communicate, let us talk, let us do the practice. There is no issue. Ah, we, we follow it. You may raise questions, I will answer. And ultimately, you know, there is no issue with the, that mind which thinks, which plans. You know, I'll go to the kitchen, make a tea, I'll drink tea, I'll eat food. Oh, all this, everything is good. Even that is good that today I have a lot of program to meet a lot of people. Everything is good. That is what the second level is. It is the normal state of the mind. At the time, Nancy, when you fixed an appointment on Friday to meet a lot of people, there was no problem at the point of fixing an appointment. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. huh? Go slowly. First, knowledge coming from the sense organ. I know this is aquarium, that's so good. Oh, fish is there. So there is no doubt, there is a clarity. I may, know, know, I may not know the quality of a fish, the breed of a fish, that's all, but I know. So knowing clearly with the clarity has no issue with the fear, anxiety, problem. Thoughts, second level. Through the thinking, through the intellect, in my mind, the knowledge I live in has no problem. I'm giving the answer of all the first three questions now. Now there is a third level. I have been talking about ignorance. I have been talking about impurity. I have been talking about distraction. So that ignorant mind is behind the thinking mind. That contains millions and millions of impressions, uh, not only of this life, but also of many births. Why I'm telling you? That layer of the mind cannot be known by the intellect, cannot be known by the mind. But we know its effect. We know the effect that happens in the mind. Why I'm anxious? No, everything is okay. I went for examination, and a doctor said everything good, but still I'm anxious. So anxiety is an effect coming from the unknown source which the mind and the intellect does not know. So the moment you see, you look at a person, I hate this guy, impact in the mind. But why I'm hating? What I have to do with it? Okay. Why I react to Lois, for example? Why I react? 
the intellect says, you know, after all, she is my daughter. We are working together. Everything is goody goody. Why the mind is react effect? We don't know the cause effect. So, and we are carried away by the effect. And that effect is a reaction, anxiety, pain, pleasure, duality, fear, long list. If you remember, that effect is caused by eight factors. That effect, impact in the mind is caused by eight factors. So we start fighting with the effect and there is no solution. Maximum you say I reacted, I repented, I asked forgiveness. Again the second time, again there is a reaction, there is a forgiveness and done. So life continues. We don't change. See that. I think I'm clear. So you have to listen to it. So understand again and again and again and again. First is the physical knowledge. I know this is television, so there is no problem. Through the thought also, I know what kind of a gadget it is. There is no problem. But the impact in the mind coming from the unknown source and that impact when it lives in the mind. I don't have this good TV. Liking and disliking, eight factors. I should have it, how to have it, how to grab it. And the, the mind starts thinking in a wrong direction. We create a wrong notion and we start living in anxiety and reaction. Eight factors. That causes the impact. Take one example. You have to play a role of a mother outside the office and when you play the role there is no problem. When you forget to play the role, then only the reaction comes, then only the disliking is there. No, I have to play a role, and mom, no, finished. In the office, play your role well. What exactly is your role focus there? So what happens? The mind is not, mind is not going to, mind is not going to, fire those reaction anxiety which is coming as an impact. You have nothing to do in the office except you play your role well. Finished. You'll be the happiest person in the office. You'll be more happy in the office than here because that is an active state. So you, you are playing your role. Think of it. Now know the magic. Our all great masters declare that this 90% of the mind is natural. What is natural? It is always in permanent peace, happiness, love and wisdom. 90%. The impact happens only in the 10%. And still we are living in anxiety, stress, duality, conflict and suffering. Why? Because I don't know it. It enters from the ignorant mind, which cannot be known by the mind in the intellect, but its impact is known, effect is known. Ninety percent of the mind is natural. It by default it lives in permanent peace, happiness, love and wisdom. Provided 
that 10% impact is not there and when a single impact is there, the effect is there, you get anxious, that anxiety takes over your entire 90% of the mind. How many times you have been anxious? And how many times you recovered from it? The moment we are anxious as, oh, as if now the entire life is gone. Come on, nothing is gone. It has been repeated thousands of times in our life. We forget our real nature. We forget that natural state of the mind. When you forget that natural state of the mind, then this anxiety, one symptom, second symptom, third, repetition, it creates a vicious cycle. Then the doctor says, I have a, you have a chronic problem. The effect is only 10% of the mind. 90% remains intact. If you go a little deeper, Nancy, the moment you declare and make a statement, I'm in anxiety, it is that 90% of the mind making a statement. It is already there behind. So then why I continue to live in that state? The mind forgets one's true nature. It, is, it gets obsessed with the object outside, event outside. Why I get upset on one day with one event and the same event makes me happy? The culprit is here, not the individual, not the event. Not your work. Not you. Why you work? To be happy. I'm hammering on your mind. I know you will listen to it. Why I'm working? Why I'm happy? No, why I'm here? Now, can I become aware to work in and with happiness? I know. How can I be a happy being unhappy? So now when the mind perceives this is exhausting activity and which is a part of my daily work schedule or maybe occasional, the mind will repeat itself. I will be getting more exhausted in the future. I have to speak. My master used to tell me that, no, I later on realized that one hour of physical activity, now 10, hour, yeah, 10 hours of physical activity is equal to one hour of mental work that you do with the focus. We are doing payroll and accounting. Definitely it's purely a mental and intellectual activity. That is one aspect. But the second aspect is that because we are doing a mental activity which is focused activity, it keeps our energy level intact if it is focused, if it is done with an absorption. You see, I come, I say, ask you, and then I sit, my journey starts, my gossip starts. And I realize later on, but there is another secret. It is the natural state of the mind that works at its best. When you do some mental work with a focus, with a clarity, without inviting any anxiety, any reaction, you enjoy that life. You experience more energy. 
What is that impurity of the mind? It is this impurity, 10% only. It is only the 10% of the mind where the effect of the past impression creates this impurity. So I've been talking a lot about the impurity of the mind. So this is the impurity of the mind falls on the 10%. It takes over the entire 90% natural state of the mind. And then I have anxiety, I have stress, I have duality, I have a conflict, I have strained relationship. I may say that first the effect is there because of liking and disliking, because of the confusion and reaction. And if I say so that these thoughts and the feeling freezes down. So when it freezes completely, I don't notice it, but the impact is there. And the moment you are front with the, the guy with whom you got upset, and that melts again. An expression comes. That is what the impurity, we have to purify that impurity. With a clarity of understanding, and what is the purity of the mind? And up to nine. And how the impurity hides itself. Up to ten we will do and then we will do the practice. So it becomes very clear what is the purity of the mind lives in a natural state. Ninety percent. Example. Noise is coming. It strikes my ears and your ears too. The knowledge and the mind has separated the noise coming from there with my natural state of the mind, so there is no problem. Initially you said, no, let me cover it with blanket, the bird's case. Now you enjoy. In the first instant, you said, no, let everything would be calm outside, the mind was outside. Now mind says, doesn't matter. I'm dealing with another, I'm taking care of a woman who says she's a teacher. Uh, she lives in Europe. So, quite interesting. So she says that her school, she's a teacher, so her school is almost at the border of the school, her house. So recently uh, a football stadium was opened which is bordering her house. Now these kids are making a noise since morning till late evening. And that has created an anxiety and a depression in her. She says, I can't sleep. I can't leave the job because I have parents, she is single. What should I do? You will have answers in the first 10 questions. No, that noise disturbs me. So today in the morning I had a session from 8 to 9. So I started shouting very loudly. I said, is it creating a problem? And she smiled and she said, no. But I'm shouting. And you may, that shout may be, uh, as far as the pitch of the sound is concerned, it is much more than what those kids are doing to you. And she smiled. I said, what happened to you? Nothing happened. I'm listening to you. I like you. I said, you dislike that noise. Any object that you like and dislike will create an impact in the mind and that's why you have a problem. You have a problem. Do you really understand this? I understand, but I said no. When you claim that you understand, you are claiming that the intellect knows where the disturbance from where the disturbance is coming. 
but the fact is that from the source of the disturbance cannot be known by the intellect and the mind. It has come from the ignorant mind. We cannot know it. We only know the impact. We only know the impact of that noise. Now what is happening? That intellect claims the reason is these kids are making a noise. We had a new football stadium and the intellect is understanding that I cannot leave the school. I cannot, I cannot find any job. So the mind is confused. It does not want to get out of that confusion. And who is responsible for this confusion? You are. See that it came from simple liking, disliking, attachment, and the mind is constantly thinking. When you go to the school, the mind is thinking about that noise. When you are sitting in a restaurant, mind is thinking. When you are cooking, yes, it is happening. I said, why don't you replace the thinking? It is your thinking that is causing the trouble. Or does that noise intentionally creating a reaction in you? That noise made up its mind as if the noise is a living being. When you start going into sleep and noise says, no, start thinking about it. She is very intelligent. I said, what kind of an intelligent person you are? Is this the real intelligence? Last point. Intelligence means clarity. Understanding means clarity. And the clarity means that I know that knowledge in the mind has separated the aquarium from me. So whom do I care? I care myself. What I have to do with the aquarium? I see it, I know it. What do you mean? You see, you hear the noise, then what? If your mind is on with yourself, you are already clear. There is no issue. When the mind is on the Nancy, it is 90% of the mind. Let anyone in your relation become crazy. You are happy. You have to do nothing with it. You have to do nothing with it. See that. It is a fact. You have to do nothing with those uh, birds are singing. But your mind as an effect can take that singing as a reaction. Are you understanding? Are you getting it? Now replace the birds with the Lois. Replace the bird with Eric. Replace the bird with the David and see. Oh my goodness. There is nothing. So reaction is gone. And because the mind is 90% natural. What happens? You can't imagine. Well, I'm just taking, uh, making you aware. When that 10% of the mind with its impact is not working, you experience that love, that permanent peace and happiness. So one outside is reacting and the mind inside says, okay, that's really good. Reacting. So you are not, you are not reacting. Because you know the reaction is there, not in here. One is making simply a statement. The words cannot, uh, cannot create any turmoil in me. It's simply words. Coming from outside, from a person. Free from likes and dislikes. No anxiety. No stress, the mind continues to live in that state of calmness. One of the greatest uh, 
an example in the life of Buddha and many other masters happened, but that explains the principles beautifully. A person came to Buddha and he spit it on his face. So three of his disciples stood up and caught his neck. How dare you? Buddha said, drop it. Did he do anything to you guys? No. He did to me. That's all. Finished. So he left. The next day he came and he bowed down. He touched at the feet and he was crying. He was asking forgiveness. I'm talking of the mental state we can reach through the practices by learning this. So Buddha said, now you have asked forgiveness, sit here. To whom I should forgive? The one you are here now or the one who was yesterday? But the one yesterday, that person is already gone from you. Why should I forgive you? There is no need. Now you are already humble. So sit and learn. Sit and learn so that the impact of yesterday should be burnt down and you start living a life of peace and happiness. We carry forward. Today I reacted against Nancy, so next time when I meet, my face, my mind, my habit, my thoughts, everything. What he will say, what, how she will re respond, whether she will react. I will again ask forgiveness. You are already, mind is already crazy. Do you see this point? So constant contemplation and reflection on today's, today's uh, journey. And you can pick up any simple and single practice. Now we'll go deeper into the practice of self-awareness so that you realize how it is designed. So how it is designed, just close your eyes. Close your eyes, my friend. After understanding that, we will do the practice of self-awareness with a clarity of understanding. Now see that self-awareness, eyes are closed. The moment you close your eyes, what is the message? The message is that we are going inside. We are going inside. Why to go inside? To remove the effect. That is very clear. But at the same time, we should prepare that that preparation is being comfortable. You see that how you can slip from the knowledge, from the sense to the mental knowledge. So once you have a clarity in the mind, and what is that? This is what I've been talking. Look at the neck joint. Neck joint is an object, the sense knowledge. And mental knowledge? Sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Nothing has changed. You simply become aware of the 90% of the natural state of the mind. At this moment, we are doing nothing. So, we repeat in order to reaffirm and confirm. Look at the shoulder joint, joints. Look at object. And then you move to the natural state of the mind that I express by sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. I'm not doing anything. Why don't we recognize this is 90% of the natural state of the mind? Because of impurity, because of ignorance. 
there is nothing easier than this. There is nothing easier than this. Look at the hip joint. Look at the hip joint. So, joint object. That is why I specifically have been doing the same thing. But now we are deepening that knowledge, practice with the knowledge, object and natural state of the mind is being comfortable, being sensation, comfortable in steadiness. Why I don't recognize? I told you. Because of the ignorance. Because of ignorance. And then another point comes being carefree. What I've been talking about being carefree, free from the cares. Free from the cares of the mind. This mind, the mind that is caring unwantingly, unnecessarily, it pokes its nose everywhere, is the effect of that impression, the ignorant mind. Mind that cares is impa is the ignorant mind effect of ignorant mind. Why the intellect does not know? How can we say that does not know the source but know the impact? Did you not choose intellectually with a clarity that we are going to meditate and why the thoughts are still there? Why the mind why the mind gets distracted even in meditation? I have chosen to meditate and still unwanted thought comes. We got the answer. So, what I say being carefree, let the thought come and go. No issue. You know, it becomes in a very advanced practice because you have understood those principles of eight factors that causes the delusion and the suffering. We have partially covered the six enemies. And we have understood what exactly is the impurity of the mind. So one thing is sure, we understand there is a clarity that the impact is continuous and that takes over my natural state of the mind. So the obvious step will be to purify the mind. The prana, the energy is related closely to the mind. That is the concept. We are not uh, understanding based on the objectivity of the science. So look inside. So now we'll purify. Look inside the forehead. We are going deeper with the knowledge. Look inside the forehead in the space and start breathing long and the fast breathing from both the nostrils. Long and the fast breathing. Check it. You are doing it clearly first from the belly 
then the chest, breathing out from the belly and the chest. And now you have understood clearly, you want to remove the impurities, so continue the journey. Do not stop. You see, by such a simple self-awareness practice that I can easily explain to you now, can take you deeper. Just continue. So the option mind will choose. It will blame and complain. Or escape, I cannot do it, but you continue doing it. The mind will be totally absorbed in doing the practice. And the mind, natural state of the mind, will do the practice and that can be done mm, as long as possible. Long, deep. Long, deep, continue. Continue long in the hissing. Long, deep in the hissing. You may have new experiences. Accept the new experiences. No worries. We have already done many a time, so we have experienced totally a different state. Continue. 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 It should be the way I'm doing with the noisy breath, long in the hissing. And stop it. There are many ways we can understand. The mind was reacting during the breathing. The mind was saying, no, no, it is blaming or complaining. It means there is a lot of impurity. And the impurity is not to be equated with the sin. Nothing like that. The second is the mind is already absorbed. The moment mind is absorbed, it immediately picks up what is the long and the deep and the fast breath. There is the total belly movement and the ribs movement. And that shows that we are doing the practice with the natural state of the mind. And then the new experiences rises. Maybe freezing of the body, tingling, every cell of the body feels, ah, vibes, 
the mind seems to be blank. So this, all these four experiences will be alternating. So this week you are doing, you are listening, and after once you understand self-awareness practice, we already know it. It has got the four steps. The first was the preparation, and this, then comes the first step is the long, deep, and quick breathing. Uh, and the third is the humming. So what happens in the humming, you will, you ask the natural state of the mind to take over the 10% of the mind. We have already understood it. So take a deep breath from the belly and the rib case and continue to inhale until, until the neck bone and while breathing out lips together and start the humming sound. Mm -hmm. and is your mind natural so you have you will not be in a hurry to inhale, you inhale into the valley, it takes time into the rib case and continue humming. Deep, silent, slow inhalation and long, deep and the loud humming. You know, what is the natural state of the mind? The mind knows everything is going as per the plan. That is how you work in a business. Let us do in the business, type the practice. Continue. Deep, silent, slow inhalation, long, loud, rhythmic humming as if you are singing.
and stop it. Do nothing. Now we'll understand that natural state of the mind. Look at the head and the neck and how the mind responds. It is not reacting. Impact is gone. Sensation, relaxation in stillness. Right arm, sensation, relaxation in stillness. How simple, easy. Everything is inside and outside in the world. Left arm, sensation, relaxation in stillness. The chest and the belly, sensation, relaxation in stillness. Right leg, sensation, relaxation in stillness. Left leg, sensation, relaxation in stillness. The entire body sensation, relaxation in stillness. And now we will see how that natural state of the mind is disturbed by the contents in the mind, which is an effect and the impact of the past impressions, and how to recognize, but at the same time we progress. You feel some thought comes, sensation, you hear me. Anything that happens to the mind, you simply drop Shantuham. Shantuham means I'm the peace. And you may experience the moment of emptiness and the silence. So the moment any thought, feeling enters the mind, good or bad, high or low, you simply drop Shantuham with knowing what you are saying, I am the peace. And after few seconds, you will discover nothing is there. So even drop Shantoham. Again the thought comes. Same practice, same step. After all, when you are on the road, then only you know the traffic and the, and the lane. And if the mind is still crazy, it has returned home, and it is still thinking about the same thing, what we are doing. Almost we are doing nothing. Why? The mind lives into that natural state. And any thought, feeling, sensation can simply shantaham. 
शांत 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 I understand another point the birds are making the sound and we hear it but the impact is not there in the mind sound is there good okay feeling is there good temperature is there good so even there is no need to say shanto hum am okay and then enjoy that natural state of the mind natural means permanent peace and happiness love in the wisdom is already there and doing nothing remain as you are shanti 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 Om Shanti
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences.